Hey everybody, it's Mrs. C, and I'm coming to you with a screencast on multiplying polynomials. Now, in particular, we usually, in Algebra 1, multiply binomials. So let me give you an example of a multiplication of a binomial. Let's do 4x minus 2 times the quantity of maybe a negative 3x plus... Six. I'm just making it up here. Now this is a binomial times another binomial. And as long as we have a polynomial that has two terms or more times another polynomial that has two, two terms or more, we have to use a different method that will in, 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 you know, in turn wind up distributing the multiplication process from one of the terms to all of the other terms. So kind of like a, a complex distributive property. But for a lot of us, this distributing from one term to another term gets a little bit complicated. So I have a method for you that it's called the box method. So I would like to show you the box method. It starts with uh, drawing a box. Makes sense, right? Now the way you decide how to break the box down is you look at what poly you have. You have a binomial I said so that's a two term and here's another binomial to another two terms so it's really a two by two box and so you want to make a box that is divided two rows and two columns then what you would want to do is just put in your kind of corresponding terms for each binomial pair so that's a little bit it's a little bit complicated what I just said. I don't, I don't even know if I actually said what I meant. You want to take maybe this binomial and put it here. For example, a, I'm having a real hard time with my stylus today. 4x minus 2, like that. And then let me just take this other guy to different colors so you can see it. Put it up here. And that's a negative 3x plus 6. So that's my binomial of a 4x minus 2 times the binomial of a negative 3x plus 6. And it's very similar if you remember back in grade school when you did the multiplication chart and you had 1 through 10 on the top and 1 through 10 on the side and you just had a, a nice little box that gave you all your fact families for maybe 1 through 10 or 1 through 12. So it's very similar. In fact, we're going to do it pretty much the same way. Let me get rid of all this extra stuff up here because we Really don't need it anymore. A lot of students ask me, Mrs. C, does it matter who goes on the, the side and who goes on the top? That's a good question. And the answer is based on the, um, the commutative property. No, it doesn't matter in what order, or in this case, kind of an order or direction you multiply, as long as you're just multiplying, uh, you could put the 4x minus 2, we could wind up putting it up on the top, and the negative 3x plus 6 on the on the bottom, you could switch sides, so one's on the right instead, one's on the bottom, it, none of it matters. So let's just put these guys together so you can see the process, and then I'm going to let you try one on your own. So to fill in this box right here, you would multiply the number that is above it and the number that is to the left of it, making it a complete box. So it would be the negative 3x times this 4x. And what is a negative 3x times a positive 4x, it's a negative 12x. And so over here in this box, it will be this 6 and this 4 coming together to complete the row and column. That would wind up being a 24x. Then we want to pretty much get rid of that. The reason for the box is that we don't have to think of it as distributing, you just get to relax a little bit. So now to fill in this box, we would do the negative 2 times the negative 3x. That's going to give me positive 6x. And lastly, this box coming together is going to give me a negative 12. The 6 times the negative 2, negative 12. Now we filled in the box and we're almost home free, but what we always do when we do anything in algebra is we simplify our terms. And so what we want to do is look to see if we have any like terms. And I just saw a mistake. I don't know if you've been trying to yell at me and I can't hear you. Back when we did this box up here, I got it, I see it. We have a negative 3 times a positive 4, x times x is 
X squared good catch if you saw me and you were thinking, I wonder if she's going to catch it. I always catch, well, I don't always catch it, but I always, always try to catch it. So let's see if we have any other X squared terms. Right here, I only have a negative 12 X squared. All right, and it's just a really not a very good job writing. So sorry. Okay, I got that guy. Now, if I look across here, see right there, do you see we have a 24 and a 6x? We can put those together and have a positive 30x. And then here, a negative 12. There are no other constants. And so we have a negative 12. That's my final answer. Negative 12x squared plus 30x minus 12 is the product of negative 3x plus 6 times 4x minus 2. Let's just try another one. All right, so I'm going to clear this screen, and we're just going to do another problem. Let me give you another binomial to a binomial, and I'm going to let you try it without me, and then I will show you the answer. So we're going to say, I don't know, let me make it up, 7x squared minus 3x, and then let's times that to, say, 8x plus 5. Okay, two binomials again, making it a 2 by 2 square or box. We need to call it the box method. It's not called the square method. So there we go, a 2 by 2. Again, it doesn't matter. Last time I think I put the first guy on the side. This time let me just prove to you it doesn't matter, and I'll put... The one up at the, I'll put the first one up here. So we have a 7x squared here. Bring that little sign over with the negative 3x. I know we say minus 3x, but right now I want to call it negative 3x. And then over here, 8x and then a positive 5. Now all we have to do is fill her in. So if you'd like to pause me and fill it in without listening to me, otherwise I'm going to try not to make any mistakes with my variables and my exponents. So go ahead and pause and Move ahead and then turn it back on to check. All right, I'm going to keep going, though. I'm going to do the 8 times 7. That's 56. X times X squared is X cubed. I'm going to come over to the next box. An 8 times a negative 3 is a negative 24. X times X is X squared. That is 7 times 5. That's a 35. There is no other X, so it's just X squared. And we have a 5 times a negative 3, that's a negative 15, and there's only an x. There we go. Now, always looking to combine your like terms. So in this case, I'm out of space, so let me just erase this original problem up here, and that's where we'll put their product, the answer. All right, so let me just change color so you can see my little mark through right here. I don't see any other x cubed terms. So I'm going to say 56x cubed would be my, what do they call, cubic term. I'm going to come here and find my quadratic term right there, my squares, x squared. So we got to do a 35 and a negative 24. So I've got to take 35 and subtract 24, and you know that's going to give me, what do you say, 11? I'm thinking 11, positive 11x squared. All right, and then we're going to see, oh, this is the last term, no other x's. So you have a negative 15x. Final answer, as long as I subtracted properly, we're in good shape. Subtraction is harder than the multiplication. All right, let's try another one that's not a 2 by 2. Let's try something that's a little bit different. Let's just do, I don't know, let's try 3x minus uh, 5 times the quantity of 2x squared, fix this, oh, the stylus is killing me, minus 7x plus 6. There we go. Now, in this case, I have a 2, which is a binomial, by a 3-term poly known as a trinomial. So you can make your box 2 by 3 or 3 by 2. It, it really doesn't matter. More, it more depends on the space that you have for your process. Looks as if I could probably fit this in better. Probably not the best person. I mean, best place to put that. How about that? That's a nice two by three box, right? So I'm gonna obviously, I hope, I hope it's obvious in this case. I'm gonna obviously put my two term on the side where I have a place for two. And you'd see if you did that wrong, you wouldn't have enough room to put 
the trinomial if you don't think about it ahead of time. Not the hardest thing you've done in Algebra 1 so far, I would agree, right? You don't have to put the positive, it's assumed. And just double check you, you know, copied everything right, didn't make any mistakes, didn't lose a variable, didn't lose an exponent, didn't lose a negative or a positive. We're good to go. You go fill this in and come back to me when you're done. All right, here we go. We have a 6x cubed minus 21x squared plus 18x negative 10x squared positive 35x and I've got a negative 30 no variable that's a constant do a quick double check always just to make sure you haven't lost any signs or multiplied wrong I'm actually doing that check while I'm talking which if you've done as many screencasts as me it gets easier as you go but you can always screw up Please let me know if I did. I don't see anything wrong. Okay, so now we've done all of our multiplying. Now I just want to have a place to write my answer. And so here we go. I like to do a new color so you can see me cancel them out. And we're not really canceling them out, but we're combining them. Um, on my cube, I don't see any other cube. So 6x cubed is going to be it. Now my quadratics, the squares, right there. I have a negative 10 and a negative 21. That's a negative 31. Same sign sum. Keep your variable and your, your um, exponent. Everything stays. Remember, when you combine like terms, you keep the term that you're combining. All right. Um, we've got the 18x and the 35x right there, adding those two together. 18 and 35, I believe 3, 4 is going to be 53. No, yes. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, carry the 1. Yeah, I'm, no, 5. <laughs> no, 53. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, just don't finish, don't forget. Get stuck on your adding and subtracting and you forget to put your last term down. Minus 30. That's my answer. Now that is a polynomial in four terms, which we don't have a special name for it. Well, I don't know the special name for it. It is a um, cubic because it's leading coefficient when it's ordered from the highest to the least. It's leading, um, excuse me, I said coefficient. It's leading variables power is a three. It's a third degree polynomial, otherwise known as a cubic polynomial in four terms. That's all the fancy schmancy stuff. All right, so that's that. Guys, that is how you do the box method. It gets more, it only gets more complicated the more complicated the box or the more complicated the terms, but it really doesn't get, the process doesn't get any more complicated. You multiply, you combine, and then you're done. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, exercise in multiplying polynomials. And for more practice, just go find yourself on CUDA and the free worksheets. Look up multiplying polys, and you can just practice this and have an answer key readily available. Until then, guys, you know, I will see you on the flip side. Peace.